Hi there and welcome back to Resurrection Retro. Today on the bench we've got the uh, Panasonic NV366 uh, VHS uh, top loading uh, video recorder. Uh, as you can see from the picture, the picture is absolutely awful, the video heads are quite badly worn. Uh, the tracking on this is uh, all over the place, um, mainly down to slightly aligned uh, audio heads, uh, which I, again I can solve. Um, there is actually colour in the picture, which is actually surprising because I've most of the time this, this thing hasn't been pretty awful. Um, so if I actually move the tracking, that is that is pretty much um, in the centre of the tracking control right now. Now I know this can be uh, capacitors and all sorts of things, however uh, the picture is just so bad I've actually ordered and got uh, another video head which is there um, for, for this machine um, and the part of this this video and this video is going to be about replacing the video head in this machine. Now the machine itself is actually turned into quite a nice little machine. I've done a number of repairs in a, in a previous video um, and it's starting to uh, perform quite well from a mechanical perspective. Uh, so yes, what we're going to do is uh, replace the video head uh, and so let's crack on with it. So the first part of replacing the video head is we've got to take off the cover and uh, various um, uh, metal shields and stuff like that. So let's, let's get that done. So, the covers are off, um, here's the current video head here and what we need to do is we need to de uh, make notes of uh, the different colours and um, uh, wires going onto the actual PCB board on top of the, uh, the video head and then we desolder these, uh, undo the two screws, take this video head off, also we need to take off this uh, uh, contact, this is actually an earthing strap which goes to the top of the video head uh, that gives you a static and uh, build up on the drum um, and yeah take the video head out put the new video head in uh, solder all of the cables back into the right places we make sure that the actual drum is uh, uh, torqued down as well make sure it's actually uh, down there we put the earthing strap back on again um, we try the video recorder out so uh, Let's see what happens. So the video head here uh, came in from eBay, uh, and it comes in a comes in a little plastic protective uh, pouch. Um, so yeah, and so it's a forehead video uh, recorder. So yeah, let's uh, let's get on with it. The great thing is, is the uh, there's markings here for uh, yellow, red, yellow, white, yellow, brown, blue, yellow. So it does help us actually um, uh, orientate the drum. Um, what can happen, and I've had it in the past, where when you're replacing the video drum and you get the uh, connections uh, 90 degrees to, um, or 180 degrees to the current layout. Uh, on older drums where they don't mark this, uh, that can sometimes cause uh, azimuth problems uh, and head switching problems, which I've uh, come across before and I had myself. So um, so yeah, let's just desolder this. Let's. So I'm just taking the earthing strap here little uh, uh, thing, uh, thing which goes onto the top. Um, sometimes also these need a clean. Uh, I find that these uh, contact points can have problems as well. Uh, normally it's just junk and crap from decades of use. Uh, and also the tension as well of the um, 
the metal there can also be a little bit wanting so sometimes you need to bend it back a little bit. Just have a look at make sure that these are all up out the way. Uh, what I want to do is make sure that the current drum is orientated correctly. So I think we're all right. So <coughs> let's undo this. Now sometimes these screws are very tight, so sometimes you have to really grip the drum. That's not too bad. There we go. sure that all of these are up a little bit so I want to make sure that uh, I get the orientation of the new video head in the same way so I'm actually going to have the writing facing you uh, with that there so if I come on all oh, this is on tight it's moving There we go. Uh -huh. So that's the current head. Now, I'll put that in like that. I don't know whether you can see. Uh, let's see whether I can zoom in. There we go. Um, the head is quite worn. So these little uh, lines are actually grooves in the metal and they act like a, an air bearing. Um, if you've ever played one of those games uh, where you've got the hockey puck and it's got the, the air coming out uh, and it's sliding over, it's a similar principle. Um, it's, yeah, there's still, there's still the grooves there, but it's a very, very worn drum. Um, the video heads all look quite worn. Um, the head chips are all pretty worn I can see there's not much protrusion um, the protrusion is quite important it mustn't be too much that um, uh, it damages the tape but also too little uh, you just don't get a signal and that's what's happening is that they've got that's the heads have worn down below their minimum threshold it's possible uh, to actually undo these the head chips and move them forward as a tad but you lose all sorts of um, uh, uh, alignment on the actual head. I have tried before and it sort of worked, but it was just a get out of jail for a particular one particular machine. Um, so yeah, so that's the old video head. So I'll just put that on there. In fact, I'm going to put it on top of that. I don't particularly want to damage that head just in case. Now, um, here we've got the slip ring. I don't want to turn this, but essentially this is a, a bearing with uh, some coils of wire, and it works on the same pr principles as a transformer, transferring uh, electrical signals across uh, a, a very small gap, um, uh, and that's how the video head um, can actually spin and 
literally uh, and not have a physical connection uh, with the thing. So you've got uh, essentially you've got two different slip rings on either side. So you've got the base one, which then go, there's some cables that go off into uh, onto the circuit board, onto the um, uh, uh, signal processing board. Um, and you've got the, the other slip rings here. Now, I have had on Betamax machines, these slip rings are, are made of uh, a ferrous material. I think it's a ferrous material. It's, it's some sort of material, and it just, just breaks up with the spinning uh, centrifugal and the vibrations as well. Uh, I've had where Betamax uh, um, slip rings have actually done that. Um, I had an uh, SLF 950 machine, uh, Super Betamax, and the machine was just destroyed uh, by that being done and I couldn't get a, a, a whole lower uh, half of the drum so yeah let's 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 see whether we can get this uh, new head on there um, it's going to be interesting um, I will clean this head uh, as we go so right so there's the new um, the new drum as you can see apart from a few fingerprints um, there um, it's lovely and shiny. The head chips are all in good condition. Yeah, yeah. Just looking. Oh, there we go. Um, so what we, we want to make sure that the actual orientation is correct. So I'm just making sure. I don't mind if I get fingerprints on it. I'm going to clean the head anyway before we use it. So here we go. So that's the problem. Is 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 trying to get all these cables through this hole. Um, there we go. It's just making sure I don't I don't damage the let's just make sure that that can screw down. Yeah, that's one. Let's make sure I can get the. Yep, that's fine. So we can now. That's it. Put the drum down. Uh, and most VHS machines are pretty easy to change a drum. You don't necessarily need an alignment. Some do. Uh, Betamax. Um, some of them you can. Uh, the early ones you have to actually have an alignment tool. I do have that. Uh, I've done a, a SL uh, 8000 and, and uh, 8080 before, um, uh, and they are a pig because you have to use a micrometer to actually align the head. It doesn't actually isn't a, a, a tight fit uh, with intolerances. Whereas the VHS, uh, actually changing the heads are pretty straightforward. So there we go. Right, seems to spin nicely. Good. No signs of it. Uh, no sound of any scraping. Um, that all seems very good. So really, now it's all about getting these um, cables back onto the uh, PCB. Now the PCB is brand new, so it hasn't got any um, uh, solder on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to. Uh, now the head is safely there and the, head, uh, the actual chips are safely out of the way. I didn't want to do it on the deck, um, so I'm just going to heat up and just put a little bit of solder. Don't keep the, the soldering iron on there for very long because the heat can transfer down and damage the head chips. That's quite an important Thing, so so um, getting the cables run the wrong way won't damage the head drum but you'll certainly get a very reduced picture quality or uh, uh, field issues or stuff like that, color, the lack of colour demodulation and all sorts, so there we go. I just want to put a little bit more on that one. Also keep your uh, soldering iron temperature down to about 360, 380, something like that. Don't have it too hot. 
when you're doing this. Um, so, okay, that's various people have ways, different ways of putting these cables back on. I tend to try and use a screwdriver just to tap them back down again. Yellow. White. And often the cables themselves have changed colour and I'm partially red green colour blind and sometimes that can cause a problem. Yep, there we go. Yep. No, didn't get it. Come on. And there we go. That's all the soldering done. So I'm just going to check my work, make sure that yeah, that's in there, that's there, that's there. That all looks good. That one's a little messy. Uh, I might just try and yeah, just give that a little bit. It's it probably work, but I just want to make sure that I have a good bit of work there. There we go. That's a bit better. So that's the video drum done. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to plug this in. And uh, before we do that, actually, I'm, I want to clean the video head. Now, there are various ways of cleaning video heads. Um, I come from a slightly older school. Um, I'm not so delicate when it comes to uh, this. So I, I come from uh, uh, a slightly older generation who work on these, uh, where actually I'm reasonably uh, firm with how I clean my video heads. And the best way is to get a, a scrap of paper, tear off a reasonable size square-ish, uh, and what happens is you soak the paper with uh, IPA, and then you put the whole piece of paper on there onto the actual drum and then spin the drum against the paper and it works brilliantly it will clean pretty much any clogged head you don't use um, uh, any uh, cotton buds and q-tips because they'll slag on the head chip and damage it uh, you can use the little chamois uh, style uh, cleaners um, I, I have tried it and I just don't like them um, uh, what with this method with your thumb behind the actual paper like this you can actually feel the head chip as it goes past and you can actually feel whether um, it's got any penetration as if it was going into the tape so let's just move it up so the key is to actually keep the paper as still as possible and just rotate the drum and there we go as you can see uh, there is there was some gunk, Ooh, there we go, there was some gunk on that head, even though it's brand new, it was just a bit of surface dirt, and yes, it's taken that off, uh, and it hasn't damaged the head, M mustn't move it up and down, it's, it's got to literally go, um, the head, uh, the paper's got to go very, very flat against it, and preferably overlapping the actual, um, uh, where the actual head chip is, the, the the gap where the head chip goes. So what I'm going to do, do again is I'm also going to have another go again. Now I can use the same piece of paper, that's fine. Um, and again, just put the uh, some IPA on there. And not 
not firmly but just pushed up against and then keep the hand as still as possible and rotate and you can actually I can actually feel the head chips on the paper and all the head chips feel absolutely fine sometimes you can actually feel when a head chips broken there we go yep, and it's taken a bit more crap off as well so I'm very happy with that that's all good I actually find this method far, it cleans the heads far better um, and for some serious head clogging um, I actually use an IPA spray and I actually spray the head chips I, that's extreme and a last resort uh, so I'm just I'm just putting the old drum back in there we go I'll drum back in that you never know it's useless but I might have a use for it um, so okay let's get a um, tape let's turn off the soldering iron plug in there we go fast forward let's just move it forward a bit sorry about the noise there is a, uh, a bearing down there which is a little bit noisy Let's spin the head up. <laughs> right, this the belt on this machine is uh, pretty bad, the actual loading belt, and I've got some on order. Sometimes it will go, sometimes it won't. There we go. Great. So, I'm just going to turn the television on, my little test TV. Um, and I'm going to plug that in there. And apart from some... Um, wobbling which is fine uh, we actually now have a very clear picture so I'm just going to put this on the main telly I'm going to put the machine back together again uh, and I'm going to put it on my main test machine uh, test TV over there uh, yeah so there's no even a little bit of color there not much so right okay And there we go. So let's stop. Project. Uh, unplug power. I am going to give this machine a full recap at some point, um, but not, not right now. I just want to get all the basics working. Camera just nearly fell over. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to clean the pinch roller here. And uh, one of the best ways One of the best ways is just a Q-tip or a cotton bud, depending on what world the part of the world you come from, um, and give it a bloody good scrub. So here we go. What we can do is do that. Now, this 
is quite difficult to do. So as you can see, it's there. What we can do with many of these machines is physically pop the top of the cap off. In fact, what I should have done is actually taken this back off. I actually thought about doing this just as I put it on. And there we go, there's the pinch roller. And as you, you might be able to see, it's uh, pretty shiny and you can also see where the tape has run through. So you've got the banding on at the top and the bottom. Uh, so the rubber has been smoothed down. So what I'm going to do is now sometimes what I do is I actually attach uh, uh, a, uh, a, a nylon bristled head to my Dremel and I put a screwdriver through the actual thing. There's not this particular size but a smaller one and I then get the Dremel and I actually do a diagonal so basically I, 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 I'm actually cleaning up the um, the uh, the rubber diagonally and it makes it spin so it actually doesn't uh, create a burr in the uh, rubber and that's that's the way now this is pretty bad this is awful so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, IPA and I'm just going to see whether I can clean this up sometimes I also use a small file which I might do in this case um, and I'm just going to clean this up there. as you can see it's starting to clean up this particular one you might be able to see that there's actually if I can get the light right there we go there's two lines so what that is is, is basically the edges of the tapes have been rolling into the actual thing so this 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 needs replacing there's, there's no doubt about it so um, so yeah um, I don't have one, a, a one for this particular machine. I have a set for another machine I'm working on at the moment, uh, which is part of a, uh, a multi-part video series, which is going to be coming up soon. Um, let's see if I just keep on rubbing with the IPA. Let's just turn that television off. It's probably hissing in the background. All those you've got bat ears. Um, see it's just starting to take the sheen off so what I might do with this is let's have a look at my set of tools and again I have lots of tools and this is just my historical tools box but lots of weird and wonderful screwdrivers in there and what I want to do is if I just move everything out of the way and move that over there a little bit um, is I just gently file while turning. Sometimes it, this works, sometimes it makes it worse. I'm just trying to rough up the it's sometimes difficult to do. Let's There we go. That's sometimes easier to do. Um, and then just just rough up the surface a little bit and then let the IPA do the rest. This is purely temporary, this is not a permanent fix, this needs replacing. get some IPA and sometimes what I even do is I actually put it on there and oh, 
like that. And again, just using this technique with a, a, a nylon bristled uh, Dremel head uh, at about 30,000 RPM, and you do always do it at 45 degrees, uh, and it will just make it spin very, very quickly, but also uh, very, very quickly um, sort the surface out. Some people wash these in washing up liquid. That seems to make them a little bit uh, uh, tackier for a short time. Same for the rubber bands. You can also boil them in water. Uh, some uh, things, I wouldn't boil this because it's got a uh, bearing in there. But some ba uh, bands you can, uh, rubber bands, you can try boiling them uh, or put them in hot water. And that seems to restore their elastic nature for a short while. There we go. I think that'll do just for now. It's better than it was. So, there we go. So let's just move some of this out of the way. Uh, move this back. So I can now put this back on. Like that. And then put the little cap on. Um, uh, the ang uh, the position of this is important, uh, so I think it's that way. Um, so what happens is as the tape comes down, it actually slides up that if need be. So I think it's either that way or the other way. I can't remember, but we'll find out. Um, let me just uh, test this. Let's make sure it's all good. I don't want to close it all up and. Um, the it doesn't play. Come on, that's it. There we go. And rewind. Seems to work. Okay. The belt, which actually does the loading, is really struggling. Um, it was working absolutely fine uh, a, a few days ago, um, but now, now it doesn't. It, well, it's struggling. So, okay, let's put this back on. Oh, hang on! I've forgotten something. You may have pointed pointed out and been screaming at the uh, screen that I've forgotten to put the earth strap on the video head. So this is third time I've done this. <laughs> right. There we go. Let's put the earth, the, anti, uh, the static strap back on. There we go. I might just give this a little clean. That's that. And then put this finally, finally put this back on again.
One, two. Now we can put the cover back on. Is a, a, a BNC to phono adapter just for the video out. Put that back on. So really all this machine needs now is new belts, uh, a new capstan and a recap and that's pretty much it. So, right, let's get this plugged into the, uh, the, the other colour television over there, uh, which has got a bigger screen and easier to see, um, and see what it looks like. So, let's see what this looks like. The tracking controls right bang smack in the center. Let's see what picture we get. Oh, hang on. There we go. We actually have a decent picture. Let me just move it camera forward. There we go. If I push it all the way to one side and back the other way, that looks very good indeed. Uh, I'm just adjusting the sharpness. Like that. Pause. Look at that. Lovely, lovely still picture. So um, this thing has... Sorry about the angles, the zoom on this thing doesn't, this camera doesn't work very well in 8K. You just press it once and it'll find it. That's early, early freeze frame. So that's pretty good. Oh, what's up in there? There we go. I'm not surprised there's a few more problems purely because the belts are pretty manky on this thing. I'm surprised it's even loading up uh, and doing things. Yeah, that looks absolutely fine. It's a great, great picture. Move you back up there. And do that there. So that's, I'm probably gonna get a content match of some sort. There we go. Job done, I think. Job done. Hey, I'll try not to stir up the fish there, buddy. Yeah, my name's Coda. Stay with me, Coda. Oh, yeah. Fast forward. Yeah, it's not usually with uh, most uh, fast forwards. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's alignment problems with the tape. Um. When you're fast forwarding, most video recorders will get bars in the center as it they've um, synced it up so that actually it's going on. It, it, it's 
most video recorders will actually fast forward with the noise bars generally in one place or in, within the screen. Uh, some roll as they go. This one, due to alignment problems. Come on. Come on. There we go. Yeah. There's a number of alignment problems still with this machine. Yeah. Nice, clear picture. Very happy with that. So another one saved from the scrap heap, from the tip. All seems very nice indeed. Right, well, thanks for watching. Um, let's just. Thanks for watching. I hope this was uh, instructional in terms of how you replace a video head. It's pretty simple. Uh, there's nothing too wrong uh, that can go wrong with it apart from touching the head chips and damaging them, uh, or getting the drum around the wrong way, the, uh, the connections on the wrong uh, pads on the PCB on the actual head. Um, otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, this machine is now going to uh, go back into my collection. So if I just do that. Uh, yeah, it's going to go back in my collection. I've got an, uh, a number of Panasonics, and uh, this is a, a good example of a, a mid-80s uh, top loader. Uh, apart from one or two scrapes, but again, I might be able to sort that out. Uh, so, yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, I'm a small channel. I appreciate the support I can get, and I'll see you on the next video.